Hello, everybody, and welcome to our episode of the Free Skate. Um, um, my name is Ryan, and we today are recapping um, the French Grand Prix in Grenoble, France. What an odd event! I, this figure skating season is shaping up to be just not like anyone thought it would be going into an Olympic year. You know, there's been a ton of disappointments, and uh, this this event was not it was not short of disappointments that's for sure so we're going to start with the ladies um i have my notes here rather so if i'm looking down it's because i have these notes honestly i was going to combine skate america with the french one today but i figured i should probably do two separate videos so the next video you see skate america i'm probably going to be wearing the same things with the same hair unless i maybe i'll do a wardrobe change just for you and we'll see what I look like, but it's all going to be filmed on the same day. We're super late with it. I'm going to be late for my own funeral. Look at my hair. Wow, that's brutal. This is my just got home from work hair and haven't done anything yet. So, yeah, we're we're good. Maybe I could just put it down for my face. <sighs> okay, anyways. <laughs> um, so, my first point I have is what happened to Tuck Tomasheva? Oh my gosh, dude, that woman was a world champion before. She's not even like... Like, honestly, like, she wouldn't even get out of Canada now. Like, it's just, it's mind-boggling on how much she can change in a few seasons. 53.03 um, in the short program, 114.2 in the free, 0.62 in the free skate, 167.65 overall. Ooh, like, I'm actually kind of sure if I did a short program and I did a free program, I actually might be able to get more points than that. I'm kind of half kidding. Like, I might... I might rival it. Who knows? I should do it one time and see. <laughs> um, so, all I have written down there is um, simply not good enough to get out of Russia. We all know the Russian women are like in and around 200 points or greater than 200 points. So, um, she needs to be getting about 35 more points higher to even have a chance to get out of the country. So, we'll have to see. <clears throat> uh, Mai Miyahara. Um... So didn't you guys kind of think she reminded you of um, Midori Ito in the 1991 Worlds when she kind of like did her like board hit kind of thing? Um, she like actually ran like full into the boards on the, her competition, like no room. Um, so that was like kind of interesting. <laughs> Thank God the boards weren't open there. Or she actually would have tumbled outside of the ring. That was crazy. Poor girl. Um, so... She got 64.57 in her short program. Uh, what happened to Paulina Edmonds? Um, poor showing again. Um, 157.77 overall is her season's best, but I'm not sure if that's a season's best to be proud of, especially when she was so promising last year, and now this year she kind of... I don't even know. I don't know. She's definitely not going to make it out of her country, that's for sure, if she keeps getting like that anyways. Um... Shirawa had a very nice uh, short program. She put herself right into the running uh, with 66.05 uh, uh, on the short program. So that was nice. Um, Zigatova, um, she had trouble in her short, 62.46. So she's human too. These Russian ladies are showing some humanity this year. Um, they're very up and down. They're like... They're pretty much always across the board, like tops of the standings, but they're making these mistakes now that you know the other girls can actually start to capitalize on, which is kind of exciting for the other girls. Um, so 62.46, uh, but she had a wonderful long program. She won the event overall with 213.8, um, 151 in the free skate. That's a massive score. Her, her free skate was ridiculous. The only thing, again, I think I've said this before this year, I don't like it when she combines uh, like all her jumps in the later part of the program. I just think it ruins the program. I, I understand why they're doing it. The ISU has the rules and you get a 10% bonus in the second half of uh, your program, but I just... I don't know, to me, it just, it takes away from the overall program. I don't want to see a skater skate around and do spins for two and a half, three minutes before she starts jumping. Like, that's just not exciting. It doesn't bring the program to a climax or anything, you know? It's just kind of like you're watching her do nothing for three minutes until she starts actually jumping. Um, 
Caitlin Osmond, uh, she was leading after the short program. Um, not a very strong long program. She fell to third. Um, but at least, you know what, uh, can Canadian women qualified for the Grand Prix final. Uh, she got 206 as her final score, so she's quite a bit off what she's capable of doing. Uh, but, I mean, those those mistakes are reflected in those scores. Uh, she's just simply going to have to be better if she wants a world medal again. She's going to have to be better. Um, no ifs, ands, buts, or, uh, no ifs, ands, buts about it. Um, she's just going to have to get better than, than 206 because there's a few girls that... Um, the world podium is probably going to be a 215 plus. Um, that's what I'm kind of getting the feel for. Um, so, I don't know if it was the event before the French one, did I say? Um, there was a ridiculous amount of under rotations uh, for the women. I think it was actually me. Was it Skate Canada? That, that Or the one after that, that judges were really nailing skaters in their um, short program for under rotations. Um, so in this event, there was only one jump in the top six that was under rotated um, in the women's free skate. So that's a huge improvement from the ladies overall. I think the last one I said was some ridiculous. I think there were like 15 under rotations or something. Like that was like mind boggling. Um, Sotskova strong um, in both of her programs. She ended up with the silver. Um, I... She's another one. I just, I don't know what to say about her. She's, she's a strong skater, but I don't feel it from her. I don't feel her program. I don't feel her presentation. I just don't, I don't get the feeling of her programs. I feel like she's just doing them because she's got to do them and she's rattling off her jumps. Um, the only thing I like are her jumps are gorgeous, but uh, everything else um, I'm not really a fan of. I just, I think she's a little bit boring and um, I, I find myself, every time she's on, I tend to be looking away at other things around the room or getting up to go do something. Like I can never just focus my attention on her on like other skaters where I'm like, no, like I need to watch her. Like Caitlin Osman, um, I will stay and watch like full on. I met a bit of a, uh, same with Costner. Actually, I've grown to, I used to love Costner, huge Costner fan. And then when she came back last year, I wasn't sold on her this year. I'm resold again. So, uh, I really like watching her. I love watching Gabby, um, Ashley Wagner. I love watching her. Uh, so there's definitely a few skaters. I definitely like to watch. Uh, and unfortunately, um, um, Sotskova is not one of them. Um, and a little note here, I have uh, Tristan Baeva, uh, Kazakhstan, her season's best total. She broke the 200 mark, so good for her. 200.98, which was her season's best, so that's something to be proud of. Um, and that's going to vault her up into uh, standings, uh, you know, to qualify uh, more than one spot for um, her country in the next World Championship. So she keeps that up. Um, let's see, what do I have here? I have... I guess pairs. Let's do pairs. Um, so first place, Tarasova and Morozov, um, is this, yeah, it must be, um, first place, Tarasova and Morozov, um, they are scoring around 77 points for their short, which is equivalent to, uh, Subchenko and Masat, so that's right on par with the way you want to be at, um, Morgan James and, or, Vanessa James and Morgan Cipre from France, 73 points. Uh, that was a really good score for them. That's, uh, you know, equivalent to what Duhamel and Radford have been getting. Uh, so they're getting up there into medal categories. Um, and I think a nice little surprise, um, especially for the short program, was the Italian team. Uh, Del Monica and Guarice, that very strong short program for them, they had 70 points, so easily a season's best for them. Um, I was actually really excited for them. Um, seeing an Italian pair team get over 70 was a nice treat for their, their fans. They had a lot of Italian fans there, I thought. Um, the Canadians, um, Ilya Shashenka and Moskovich, their side-by-side -side jump still continue to hurt them. That has been their downfall all season. Um, usually it's hard going down on them. Um, and or under rotating them or doing a single or something like that um, and that's really unfortunate they have got to get that stuff together if they want to go to the worlds um, and the olympics for canada i mean they're gonna have to figure that out because uh, there's four four pairs teams that are really going to be competitive for that and you know what they're right now in my opinion they're the the 
they're falling to the fourth team right now. Um, so we'll have to see what happens at Nationals and what Skate Canada decides to do uh, after Nationals. Um, in the free skate, so the French ended up winning the free skate. So that was an awesome treat for the home crowd there. Um, love their free skate. They're just, I'm one of their biggest fans. So I love watching the French team. They're just so powerful. They have such great lifts. They're just so dynamic. Um, finally, they're getting their consistency after so many times of, you know, flashes of brilliance. Now they're finally putting it all together in the long and short. So again, you know what, don't count them out for a medal at Worlds either, or uh, Worlds, talk about like Worlds is coming up. Olympics, um, they could be one to pounce, especially if some of those top teams make mistakes. I could see them vaulting up and uh, winning a medal. Um, and that's also good, you know, because the Olympics have the team event. So France uh, might, you know, earn a spot with the team event because, you know, they have the ice dance team, they have their, their pairs team. Uh, their men and women are obviously their, their weaker disciplines, but at least their pairs and their ice dance, their top teams um, will provide incredibly competitive scores for them there. So France might be um, up for the team event this year, which will be nice. Um, I So the French... Uh, by the way, their final lift, I have written down to the big star final lift. God, how good is that lift where he goes around, just holds her, and then just right down onto the knees and just keeps her there. How amazing is that? The strength that that takes and the control that he does with it is just, it's like seamless. It's like he's not even trying. It's awesome. I love watching that. It's just, it's just nice. Um... So the Russians had were second trust and Morozov in the free skate by one point. Um, so the French didn't win by by much, but nevertheless, they actually did beat the Russians. Um, I it's a very bold for the Russians to skate to uh, Christina Aguilera and music like that. Um, at the beginning of the season, I was mystified when I saw a Russian pairs team out of all the pairs teams to skate to. Uh, sex-ridden Christina Aguilera song. Um, I never thought it'd be a Russian team, but uh, they're doing it. I think it's really gutsy to do in an Olympic year. Obviously, it's working for them because the judges are giving them some scores. However, I'm a little bit surprised at how high they're getting their scores. Um, I think their presentation marks are a little bit excessive especially for this program because i find this program they're just go 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 they're like a machine and uh, they they have no it's like a forced personality um i i feel like they're out of their comfort zone they're trying to make it comfortable but it's not quite comfortable yet and it's so quick they're they're gassed by the end of the program they have no it, it it's like watching a hundred a hundred meter dash you know they just go flying out and they're just racing the whole time and they hit the finish line and then it's like done and then they like fall over. Um, that's what I kind of feel like um, they're doing right now. Um, I would like to see maybe slow down a little more with some more transitions, uh, more fluidity so it doesn't look like they're running a marathon or a 100 meter dash. Um, I, so I guess we'll see what they do. If um, I don't know if the judges are giving them the same feedback or what their federation is saying about it. I'm sure uh, Russia is telling them something uh, to do because their scores are now getting on par with other people's. Um, they're going to want to change stuff so that they vault back up. And, uh, you know, I'm sure Russia wants an Olympic gold pairs medal. Um, so that's what I'll talk about. Uh, that's all my pairs talk. I'm not really going to talk about much more. Um, the ice dance, uh, poor Weaver and Poge in the short dance. They just, they missed their twizzle 68.94 fifth after the short program. Um, that really put them out of contention for a medal, which was too bad for them. Uh, they were third in the free skate, uh, but they ended up fourth overall. Um, so they had a really nice free skate, actually. Their, their free skate was something to be proud of. Um, the crowd thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, they ended up getting 176.97 overall. So a nice rebound after not the greatest short program score. Uh, for themselves, I think they're probably pretty comfortable making the Olympics. I don't think there's anyone else that's going to overtake them. Um, I think they're pretty much ahead of uh, Gillis and Poirier. Uh, but so Virtue and Moyer... Virtue and Moyer Weaver Poche and Gillis Pori should be the top three that get out of Canada for the Olympics. Um, I can't see anything else happening unless bar some major disaster or injury or something. Um, 
Stepanova and Buchan. Um, I love the twizzles that they go down with. I think it's in their free skate that they do, or their free dance. When they go down on their, their low, uh, like, shoot the duck position and do the twizzles around that way. I think that's phenomenal. I think that's probably the, one of the hardest twizzles in the world to do. And they do it so good. It's such a highlight of the program. I always get so excited when I see it. And when they, they do it good, I want to, like, get up and cheer in my living room for them. <laughs> uh, so they must earn a ton of points for that. Um, I love their charisma. They're fun to watch. They're a team I like to sit down and I like to see through to the end of the program because they're just so dynamic they're so interesting they're fresh um they're just really nice to see um so that is Stepanova and Buchan. Uh, so they had 107 in their free dance, 177.24 overall so just above the Canadians to win the bronze medal um I'm gonna move to Chalk and Bates so they were really on pace to becoming America's team until the other two started showing up after Shibatani's, you know, last few years have really come up uh, and Hubble and Donahue now are getting really up there. I think Chalk and Bates, Bates have kind of fallen off the spotlight and they seem to be um, the third American team now. Um, you know what? Um, their scores... Um, 181.25 overall, 73.25. 73.55 in the short dance. Not quite sold on their characters. I feel there's just something missing. I don't know what it is. Um, I'm trying to still figure out. I watch them over and over again, and I just... There's something inside me that's not buying their programs. I don't know what it is. Does anyone else feel like that? If you actually feel like that and you're agreeing with me, let me know, because I want to know that I'm not, like, the only one on this. And I don't think the judges are buying it either, because their scores are not they're not as high as I feel that they could be for them. Um, it's like when you watch the, the Shibutanis and even um, Hubble and Donahue, like their their characters are like full in it. Like they're super dedicated. I feel like there's almost like a wall in front of Chalk and Bates and they're trying to get through that wall, but it's not breaking down. So they're still behind it. And I'm still waiting for them to break through it. So, you know, their nationals are coming up and the Is it early second week of January for the United States Nationals, I think. Or it's just after New Year's or something like that. Um, so they have a little bit of time to tweak some things and uh, figure out ways to get some more points uh, so that they can maybe make some waves coming into the Olympics. And... And, of course, our lovely Papadakis and Cizrone. Um... The beginning of the year, I wasn't completely sold on them um, in their programs. I thought their um, their short dance looked really awkward for them because they're not the type to to do those fun, quirky rumba salsa dance type things. Um, but through the whole season right now, um, they've just been getting better and better and better and better. And I really enjoy watching them now. I think they've really worked on their their program. They've really worked on their transitions. They've really worked on their their performance of her, their characters that they're playing. And uh, they are a serious gold medal threat now. And it kills me to say because I so obviously being Canadian want Virtue and Moira to win. Uh, but they're very they're two very different styles that get very high marks and any given day I think it's going to be the one who skates better at the Olympics between those two are going to win that gold medal um it's going to be very interesting to see what the judges do and put them head to head uh their scores have been back and forth to each other um right now uh, the French have the advantage with their scores um but I'm you know the Canadians Virtue and Moyer have had some mistakes in their last few programs that they've done so their scores naturally have not been as high as the French have been so um, it's kind of hard to compare a uh, program that has some mistakes in it versus uh, the programs that don't have mistakes in it um, so 81.40 in the short dance their overall was 201.98 um, Who's your pick? Virtue and Moyer, I find, have a more, um, they're a sharper, um, more precise, fast, in-your-face, take-that kind of program and attitude, and the French uh, are more, 
the lines drawn out and classic, elegant, fluid. And I'm not saying Virtue and Moyo aren't that, because they are, but um, just just two very different styles. Who is your pick for um, Olympics? Is it uh, Virtue and Moyer or is it Papadakis and, and Cicero? And there is no wrong answer here because uh, they're both phenomenal to watch. And I actually kind of like that. They're both so different. It's really fun to watch them both go head to head. It's not like watching the same type of skaters battle, like how the old Russian pairs and Russian ice dance teams all used to do the same great Chopin and Beethoven and all this stuff. You know, now we're getting to stuff where like the Virtue and Moyer have that music where they're like, yeah, like in your face, take that. And they're so like quick and like just sharp and fast and, you know, I'm pretty sure you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, so, the men. What is going on with the men, you guys? I want to, like, rip my head out every time I watch a men's competition. It's insane. I feel like I'm jumping back to, like, 1998 or something like that and watching some, some people skates. Uh, like... The men's scores this year have been so low. Like, I honestly, I, I don't even know who's going to medal at the Olympics. Honest to God. Like, we, you realistically, it should be in the running. Should be Shoma. It should be Hanyu. Should be Fernandez. Uh, Boeing Jin may play a factor in there somewhere. Nathan Chen may play a factor somewhere in there. Though, that top five should be your top five. This season has not gone like that at all. Sergei Voronov has won gold medal for goodness sakes. Um, bronze medal here. I mean, and good for him. I'm so happy for him. Misha G winning the bronze medal. The first Grand Prix medal ever for a man from Uzbekistan. In his final year competing, the guy won a Grand Prix medal. Fantastic. Uh, 258.34. And you know what's even more impressive? The fact that his short program score was 85.4 with no quads. If that dude put a quad in there or something, like... A quad combo is going to put him at, like, 95 points. Like, that's ridiculous. Um, he really puts himself in contention with a clean short program. Um, unfortunately, his long, he doesn't have enough content, as in, like, the big jumps and quads and stuff to really compete. Um, I guess when it comes to the Olympics part. Obviously, in the Grand Prix, he's finished fourth and third this year. So, um, um, good good for him. I think that's, that's amazing. Um... And what I also love about Misha is, well, other than his amazing choreography, the fact that he spins the same, or spins both directions equally good. I love it when he does that. He goes from one spin in his camel right back to the other side, the other way, this way and then to that way. It's just super cool. That's super difficult to do. I started learning that when I was skating and it was like the other way going into like the, the opposite way i was it felt like i was like four years old trying to learn to spin for the first time it was ridiculous um so fernandez um great short program 107 points i was so happy for him i was like yes you're back you're gonna do it and then he had his long program. Um, he did hold on to win but his winning total was only 283 points um a lot of the winning totals have been around 280 points. Um, the only other one I can remember this year that has been a high score was Skate Canada when Shoma, uh, I think, what, what did he get, 302 or something like that? Three, 300 something. Um, he's the only one to pretty much do that this year. Um, if I'm wrong, please correct me, but um, the, the men have just been all over the place. I, have a f I, I just feel it's becoming too insane with the quads. There's too many quads for people to have in four, four minutes to skate a clean program. Um, I think this year in the Olympics, the winner is going to be... It'll be the one who can stand up the most times, I guess. Um, and if you know what, all the men with all these like four or five quads fall, you know what? I think it's going to be one of those Olympics where... You have that skater with two quads with a clean program that's gonna leap over them, especially if they skate skate two clean programs. It's gonna be really interesting to see who can win. Don't count anyone out this year, honestly. Um, there are so many guys that have two quads 
And if they skate clean, especially the ones that have good presentation, watch out. They're going to overtake you. Um, so, Fernandez, 283.71. Uh, Shoma Uno this year. Uh, he had his great skate counter one. This one, uh, he was not so great. He did win silver, but his score was only 273. Um, Dennis, 10. Um, I thought maybe the beginning of this year he might be in the conversation. Uh, he finished eighth. Um, and the Americans, uh, Aaron, um, my, my mind is blank. Aaron, um, I know you're correcting me while I'm watching this, but him, Aaron, <laughs> um, Max Aaron, Max Aaron, um, Seventh and Vincent Zhao was ninth. Um, the men's consistency have gone so down this year, you guys. Um, like I said, I think it's too physically demanding. Um, skaters like Misha G um, have been benefiting from that this year. Um, people who wouldn't normally medal, or especially when gold medals like Sergey Voronov and stuff like that, um, they're capitalizing on other people's mistakes um, when mathematically they shouldn't even be in the hunt for these titles and medals. Uh, there they are popping up because all the men, the other men can't land what they're, they're given. Boying Jin, um, he's really kind of fallen off this year. He's uh, downgraded his program, I think, his long program. I think he's now only doing three quads. I don't know if that's for the course of the year or if that's now that I know going into Skate America, he was downing them to three. Um, so I guess we'll have to see what that does for him. Um, and yeah, so I mean, you know, it's uh, the International de France came and it's gone and the next competition now is Skate America. Um, that's going to be the final competition for the Grand Prix events. Um, so we will see who makes the Grand Prix final after that. Um, so it'll be an interesting talk uh, for our Skate America chat and uh, we will recap who has made it to the Grand Prix final. Hopefully Jesse's back in the Skate America video. Um, because it sucks talking to myself, but whatever. Anyways, like my video, please. Share with your friends. If you have any skating fans, comment below. And we will see you for our Skate America. Okay? I'm Ryan, and you have watched the Free Skate, and we'll see you next time. Bye!